So um, I just want to welcome everybody. I'm Doug Peterson, Executive Director with Saskatchewan Soccer. We see got a good audience tonight, so we really appreciate that. So just to remind ourselves some logistics, everybody can mute themselves. Uh, we appreciate if people can rename themselves, as you see in item two, first, last, at member organization. Use the comment box. Uh, Eden's going to be on in a minute and help us with logistics. So if you have a comment, put it in the chat. Until then, I'll watch the chat. And then please raise your hand until you're recognized and then uh, mute and unmute accordingly. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to invite SSA President uh, Lisa Bagnaluri to bring greetings and, and open the meeting. Thanks so much, Doug. Can you hear me okay? Real good on my side. Okay, Lisa. perfect, thanks. Uh, so welcome everybody on behalf of the board of directors and staff. I want to welcome everyone uh, tonight on the call. I'd like to start off this meeting by acknowledging that the land that we're gathered on today, although remotely, it is the land of the Treaty 4, or Treaty 2, Treaty 4, Treaty 5, Treaty 6, Treaty 8, Treaty 10, and traditional ter territory of the Cree, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, Nihi, Now, Soto, and the homeland of the Métis peoples. The past few weeks has been a challenge for all of us. We've had high hopes that in May would arrive and we could play soccer. The government's reopened road, roadmap now has us questioning if competition will occur before late June. And that of course is a disappointment to all of us. Staff have worked tirelessly to try to influence SASC Health through the BRT. And we've gotten to the point now that we will invite all members to support a letter writing campaign. Advocacy is all about timing, and we feel that the time is right for us to express our solidarity and readiness to offer soccer safely and, and to advocate for the return to some form of competition prior to the end of June. So thank you to everyone for the participation tonight. It's these calls that are super important uh, part of the process of returning to play. With that, I'll hand it uh, back to Nicole to go over through the, the agenda for tonight. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so tonight we have a return to soccer plan update. Uh, we're going to talk about the advocacy strategy, and then we have some exciting news to share with you all. Um, like Doug said, Eden is going to be taking care of the logistics. She's just on the field coaching, so she's going to be a few minutes late. Um, so you could just plug a message in the chat there um, to Doug until you see her name pop up. So the return to soccer plan. So the current restrictions, um, as we know, were in place until May 10th. Um, now we don't know if we're going to see changes until the third week of June. And our plan was last updated on April 30th. Um, so we requested some information from BRT after the the government's roadmap was released, and these are the answers we received back. Um, so we asked if we can expect consistent regulations among team sports. Uh, we know this has been a concern um, for many of us, and we didn't always see that consistency in outdoor. Um, BRT confirmed that no team sport has been given special considerations for play this spring. Uh, so I'm just going to let someone in the waiting room here. Um, can we expect any reduced restrictions between now and May 30th or between May 30th and the three week target at the end of June? Um, we asked if we can expect a phased in approach um, and to this they indicate that there's no update at this time. Uh, we asked if there's a opportunity to expand the size of training groups. Um, they said that the training groups are not likely to be expanded over the short term. Uh, we asked about allowing smaller games uh, within training groups, and they uh, said that scrimmages are not permitted as part of training and conditioning, so no change there. And then we asked, uh, which I know is a big one for many of you, about expanding the total participants on the field for training purposes. Um, example, having 64 um, instead of the 30 that it is right now. Um, and they indicated again that this is still being actively discussed. So no update there either. 
Paul, do you think it'd be useful to stop there and see if there's any questions on that before we jump into the next piece? Yeah, for sure. If anyone has any questions, they can plug them in the chat or, or you can put your hand up. Not much new information there. Big thing, we, we hope that there's work going on. We have confidence that there's work going on, but there's nothing that anyone can say publicly to confirm that. Uh, so are we confident in that? Um, wouldn't 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 put bets on it exactly, but I think we're confident that we in BRT and that we know that they feel the same way that we do. That soccer and sport in general should be should be uh, part of uh, reopen Saskatchewan plans, and uh, we just hope that they can assist sport to push it over the line before the third week of June. Don't All right. See any hands raised here? So move on. So this is the reopening roadmap, which I'm sure uh, you have all probably seen. Uh, step one is uh, targeted or set for now for May 30th. Um, step two is where we see sport, and step two is expected the third week of June. Um, so I will hand it over to Doug to go through these timelines a bit more. Oh, Hugh, do you have a question? Comment. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. So again, like you say, there's nothing nothing definite out there, but I, I had had a pretty interesting conversation that, yeah, there, there there's definitely discussion and being pushed on this whole return to sport play. And the person I was talking to was thinking that, there could be some return something sooner than what we're thinking at the third week of June. So at least it's positive that what they're hearing. So um, don't know how fully reliable yet, but at least there, it sounds like good discussions are going on. Yeah. And I, I have that sense you as well. And I appreciate your comments there. Um, again, I don't want to put a false hope into the meeting, but we're going to continue to, to, to press that uh, with BRT um we were talking to them last week last thursday briefly uh we know that that is is something that they are trying to push through and whether or not they'll get the bandwidth from uh the provincial government from dr shahab and um those are things we'll talk about in this next section but i appreciate that comment hugh do you have any other thoughts or comments there hugh um the only one is i i know that there was a, a group in in regina that that had more than sort of the 30 allocated Yep. on the field uh, multiple times and in speaking with their provincial association directly uh, they've been contacted uh, the that party and uh, I, I'm waiting to hear something back on later this week but the provincial association has reached out to them and said that that's not uh, that's not cool and they need to adjust what they're doing so Thanks. it's positive Thank you, Hugh, I appreciate that. And so Nicole, just jump back that one slide on the BRT updates. So one of the things we've been stressing in our conversations, of course, uh, to, to BRT is that, you know, no sport should be given special consideration. Um, you know, that's happened a, a number of times this past year. And certainly we've been pushing this, this piece very hard. Um, you know, we had some information about a group uh, we shared it uh, with BRT, um, and 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 this is the response we received that there is no special consideration for play this spring. So that's the best we can tell you. And we do want to uh, confirm that uh, ultimately the, the the group, the organization that observes this behavior, if it's if there's behavior out there that's outside of the guidelines, um, those are the groups that are going to put sport in harm's way, and uh, those are the groups that are likely going to cause transmission then ultimately all sport pays the price for. So we know we know that that happened in the fall winter and you know ultimately all the sports uh, got shut down and went to training only because some sports took liberties. So there is due diligence that has to be made and uh, you can report it to Sask Health or to the BRT as soon as you have any concerns on that. So Hugh, thank you for that. Anything else from you, Hugh? 
No, that's good, I think, for now. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so we'll jump to timelines again then. Thank you, Nicole. So again, just to give a quick reminder, uh, mid-February, you know, we were trying to get progress to get out of the training mode. And at that point, they basically said, well, no, indoors basically shut down training only to the end of March. So at the end of March, we were hopeful that things would get going in April. And we, we talked about that and we shared that with you. And we're quite excited, looking forward to April 19th. But in the middle of April, the variants were on the rise. Of course, Regina was in trouble and uh, other parts of the province is starting to experience variants. So then we were advised no new info to May 10th. Recently, of course, uh, the reopen roadmap was announced and we got the steps one, two, three. And, and now we know May 30th is the date for step one. And we see there's a few things going on there. So um, uh, group fitness classes, limits of 10 people indoor and outdoor gatherings, including health, household gatherings, uh, and sorry, private indoor and outdoor gatherings, 30 people at public indoor gatherings, 150 people at public outdoor gatherings. So that's an area that that certainly um, that, you know we're here, our ears perked up, and that's an area I think we're going to talk about in this advocacy piece. So uh, that'll come up again shortly. So the next threshold is talking about obviously the earliest we could see that right now it looks like would be June 21st, three weeks after vaccination targets are met in step two, uh, or to get us to step two, and and of course as the the other sign said. Um, that with all restrictions on sport, we believe, would be lifted at that time. But we think there's a very strong case, an advocacy case, and Nicole, you can switch to that, to be made uh, for um, uh, conversations about sport being allowed before the fact. So just kind of got, got some notes here that I'll check into, Nicole, a little bit. So again, with advocacy, the timing needs to be right. And we feel that with your support, we can develop a really respectful letter writing campaign that, that talks about uh, the value that we add to the sports system in Saskatchewan. And if those letters come from all corners of the province to, to the MLAs, to the Premier, to Sask Health, to the Ministry of Sport, Culture, and Recreation, to the Ministry of Immigration and Career Training, which is uh, the, whole, the head of BRT, we think that this is the time that we can have the most influence with that type of advocacy campaign. It's gonna be very difficult for the government to justify outdoor gatherings of up to 150 people without any uh, uh, acknowledgement that outdoor space sport can be offered safely. You guys have all shown this last year that uh, soccer can operate so safely. And you know, I think it's this week we can remind the government of that and ask them to to consider steps before, before the third week of June. Last week, many of you might have observed the premier on the CBC uh, radio interview, and he was pushed very hard about not having a strong enough restrictions in place. So he, he stressed that restrictions are very significant. And the first example he said was the major restriction on youth and on sport and sporting community, uh, those kinds of things. So this really suggests to us that this is an area that's top of mind for him. So with that, we, we're, we're, we're thinking that an advocacy campaign this week can make a difference. So some of you have already taken some of those steps. Uh, that's why Sai has written a well done letter that they shared recently to, uh, to the BRT, which uh, we have a copy of that's just very helpful. So thank you for that. And of course, we know uh, soccer is the largest outdoor sport. Uh, so we have some leverage and some pressure to bear if, 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 if all of our members get behind it. Again, you guys have all invested time and resources. We know soccer can be done safely. And you know, our pitch is that organized sport can make a difference in the, in the physical and mental well-being of not only individuals, but communities. So that's kind of what the letter may look like. But what we want to do is get your thoughts on that. And um, with that, I think I'll turn it back uh, to Nicole. I think uh, that's where we're at, Nicole, to talk about maybe getting some of your, your thoughts. Um, before we do that, I see Hugh Dooley. Do you still have your hands raised, Hugh, or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one other thing, I think part of that advocacy, advocacy kind of statement is, 
is that with us running the soccer programs, whether it's adult, youth, whatever it is, yep. we can de- we can demonstrate that the fact that we are trying to, you know, ensure social distancing, ensure um, proper, you know, maintenance with regards to hand sanitization, things like that. Because as an example, I, I was driving to my daughter's the other uh, just last night and at a local soccer field, there must have been 30 guys on there just playing a pickup game. Absolutely. And um, yet I can't do it with eight-year-olds. And I think, I think some ways as a, as nonprofits, and some of us are, you know, different, different sizes than each other. I think part of that is also the financial impact we have on the economy. And, you know, they, you know, they may not think it in general, but, you know, Saskatoon Youth Soccer has a pretty big building that pays property taxes. You know, FCR, QC have pretty big lease agreements. So does PA, so does, you know, Yorkton. You know, these places all get support from local soccer clubs of, of substantial funds um, that are at risk, to be honest. Well said, Hugh, and I would echo those comments, invite other people's comments. And, and, and we are going to get into an exercise now where we're trying to capture your thoughts, but we're welcome to take comments before that. But uh, I think soccer as an organized uh, industry has been ignored for various reasons. I think there's maybe some logic that, that, that escapes us uh, that, the, that Dr. Shahab is concerned about. But one of the strategies, Hugh, is that, of course, they want people to get vaccinated and they've built a plan that incentivizes people to get vaccinated and uh, soccer is a huge part of, you know, affect large numbers of people. So uh, I'm not sure if that's what they're thinking is, but uh, yeah, your thoughts are, are well said there. So Leonard Luco, um, we'll ju- get you in and if you, if you, have, you have, have anything else, we'll get you back after Leonard. I, I've got a question for you. You said advocacy, uh, besides the BRT, who should we be writing these letters to? Well, that's one of the things we're going to talk about <clears throat> next, Leonard, but we, we will certainly uh, take note tonight and then what our intention is we'll build a uh, build a campaign. We'll share the information to you folks and and ask you to get behind it and give you specific details on those things. So, but that's okay. that's that's a uh, that's a question we'll ask tonight uh, when we get into this next exercise. Okay, thanks. So, Hugh, just checking back. You're you're good to go forward. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. All right, we'll give it to Nicole and. Uh, and you can lead us through this next piece, and then we'll have a conversation at the end of this or, or during this. So Perfect. Yeah, those questions uh, lead in well to our exercise we're going to do. Um, so we did a jam board, which some of you might remember. Uh, it was kind of a fun exercise. I think they're fun. Um, and we had success with the last one we did. There's some outcomes that came out of that. Uh, one of them was player engagement, the Techni football app that we've been running the last couple months, uh, financial opportunities, the stimulus funding, map grant provisions, raffle box, uh, the podcast that Eden is doing now, everyone's games meta- member interviews. Um, the links to those are at the bottom of our communications. So if you haven't checked those out, um, you should. They're really interesting. Um, so with that... I am going to stick the Jamboard link in the chat here. And then I'll do a quick tutorial on how to use it. If you can't use it, if you're on a phone, uh, you might find it a little tricky. Uh, So if you are on a phone, you can stick your messages, uh, your comments in the chat, and I will put them on the Jamboard uh, for you. But if you are on a computer, I ask that you do open up the Jamboard, um, or else I'll be copy and pasting like crazy. Uh, So all you do is you click the sticky note and you type whatever you want here. Save, you can choose whatever color you want and then you move it around. So we're gonna do a few questions here and some brainstorming uh, and then we're gonna sort them. Uh, So the first question we're asking is what do we want the government to know about soccer? Um, so things like, and when I say soccer, I mean us, not just, well, it could be just the sport too. You could talk about the contact and things like that, but specific to us, this is pretty big. I 
if you have any trouble with the Jamboard, just let me know too. I see a few people popping up here. It gives you funny names. And again, if you can't access it, you can just, just plug your messages in the chat box. So Nicole, does anybody have any questions? You know, just shout them out if you do. Yeah. Uh, everybody have access to the Jamboard. Uh, and and we're gonna, are you gonna work on one page at a time and one question at a time, Nicole, or, or can people go through multiple pages? Uh, I think we'll stick with, maybe we'll do these first. We'll, we'll stick with the first question for now. All right, thank you. If you're really eager, you can jump ahead, but we'll kind of work through them one at a time. And here's a good one from FCR. Help brings community together was run safely last year in the outdoor season. And if someone else has said it, that's okay. If you want to say it, you can say it too. Mental health benefits for children and athletes. That's a good one. Uh, I can't spell tonight. That's wrong. So if you wanted to need them to know why we should return to soccer, what should they know about our sport and how we run? You stressed. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nicole. I didn't do that. That's a good one. So appreciate the comments, but we want to focus again on what, what are priorities for this letter, right? Yeah. So let's keep it high level, right? And and, and focused and 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 you know what what do we want the government to know about soccer, right? So if you're in an elevator with the premier and you had 30 seconds, what are the most important things that you'd say to convince them? Um, that programming can run and run safely, uh, et cetera. I think you've got some sticky notes on the go in the chat there too. Oh, thanks, Lisa. There's some there uh, from Amanda about transition or transmission rates, Nicole. A good one enriches the lives of X number of youth and athletes. So putting some data in there. Yeah. So we know traditionally we, you know, in a normal year, we would do up 25,000 plus registrations in a summer season. Um, we probably can't expect that quite this summer, but I have actually heard from lots of sports that um, they're, they're actually numbers are pretty high of people trying to get back. And people free, feel free to, to raise your hand and chat while we're doing this. If you have something you want to say out loud instead of typing it in, that's okay too. What about, do we have any adult members on the call? What should they know about adult soccer? You know, adult one. soccer was left out in the winter. Thanks, Nicole. The other one we can capture too is, is uh, that Hugh mentioned uh, uh, about um, financial impact that, that soccer and other sports bring to the economy.
good one. Big, big one for me, Nicole. It's again, I, I think we want to emphasize that organized sport can be a solution. Currently, as, as, as Hugh mentioned, there's unorganized sports going to go on all summer. Nobody's going to monitor that. But so we, we want to say that organized sport can be part of the solution and, and keep people safe. <clears throat> Thanks. Those are some, some good ones. So soccer is safe, mental health benefits. I think probably overall health benefits too. Helps bring community together was run safely last year. I think I saw another one about it run safely. Many organizations run safe programming. They have comprehensive plans. Transmission was low, nearly non-existent. Financial impact, organized sport can be the solution. Some data, this is more of a question. Well, I think that one kind of lines up under that organized sport piece, Nicole, right? Yeah. So I think we can, there's something we can do with that, right? That's looking pretty good. Perfect. I think we'll move on to the next question. As someone comes up with something, you can feel free to add it in here. Right. So again, you're in the elevator with the premier or Dr. Schaub. You got six floors. What are you going to say first? Again, feel free to put it in here or, or put your hand up or, or just shout it out if you want. And I think that's that's kind of what we're going to draw on, and you know we're going to we're going to look at uh, some some other materials that we've noticed from other sports and other provinces, and there's things we can benefit from. But we certainly want to hear your voice in this process, so feel free to start adding in. So, Walt, if we were to have a phased-in approach, what's the most important thing? Is it, um, let's just say we started at the lowest level, training only. If we were to ask for something in addition to training, what would it be? Is it the, is it the number of athletes on the field? Is that the most important issue? Or is it some phased in approach like uh, 4v4, 6v6, those kinds of things? <clears throat> Okay. So the number of TJ, a number of athletes on the field, um, obviously right now with the maximum of 30, uh, it, it's not logical, this notion that you can have 150 people in gatherings uh, for unorganized public act outdoor gatherings, but organized sport can't offer more than 30 on a, on a huge soccer field. That's a piece we've been pushing very hard. And as you saw in the commentary, that is the one positive note we got from BRT this week that says they are working on the number of number of people on the field um, for outdoor. Yeah, excellent. So Hugh's asking a question about European studies by sport organizations and we get a variety of studies uh, uh, we're not experts on them and, for sure. And so if you have any uh, studies that you know of that are good value, please make sure you share them um, with us, okay? 
One of the things we did ask a few weeks ago, and this is where we've uh, counted on the energy coming from was from Canada Soccer's Sport Medicine and Science Council. And the last time that question was asked, uh, they, they felt that there's lots of studies, but they didn't really feel they, they made the big best case to be very honest. So those studies are coming uh, faster and faster from different parts of the world. So um, we would love to be able to keep up. If you have them, please, please send them our way. Anybody have any comments? I like, want to go, come online and talk about a study they think that would add value that we should include in the letter. Um, there's, there's studies on, on very significant impact and mental health and wellness that kids are experiencing through this period of isolation. Um, there's obviously studies that, that about uh, low transmission rate in active sport, um, those kinds of things. But yeah, if you have a good study, please feel free to share. I think I'm going to add that on the first page here. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. A good one. Jason's got a good one there too, Nicole. That kind of falls into both of these. So there's a couple about bubbles in different leagues, but we don't know if there's going to be mini leagues. So maybe I'll put a note in here. No mini leagues. Is that important to us? Well, we in, know we yeah. know that at the last part of March, we had very solid conversations before the variant showed up with BRT that they are talking about adults and youth and soccer uh, with traditional league activity allowed on a local level, no tournaments, no intra-provincial intra travel. So they're, they're sort of open to that, uh, but when, right? So if, and can we phase into that? Any other thoughts on this one? I think it'll just save type time if I just say it instead of Nicole having to look and cut base. Um, okay. I, I I would like uh, you know I would ask the government how are you policing non-regulated sport governing bodies, right? So again, the soccer in the park you're letting that go, but you're not doing anything. But when it comes to the sanction bodies, you're 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 all over us. So it's it's really you're not policing what you're say, saying. In the, in the outside community in a sense because that that pickup game will be happening every night i bet if i go walk, drive by that field guarantee yeah. yeah and that stuff has been happening uh, that's sort of unbalanced sport has been uh, left to the side in some ways uh that uh, un, unsanctioned unorganized we've we've been arguing that since uh, right from day one, first times, uh, like probably last summer, uh, first connection with BRT, we were arg arguing that. And we still we still argue that to this day. I think BRT gets it, but um, clearly um, medical doesn't get it right now. Thank you, Hugh. You got anything else on you? No, I'm just wondering if that's something that we should start speaking to our local community about. Right, whether it's Saskatoon, PA, you know, whatever centers, Yorkton, Swift Currents, Lloyd's, you know, is it is it time to speak to our city as well and say, like, listen, you, this is part of your problem too, and the fields are yours. Now, patrol them. I would agree with that for sure. And you know, without put people on the spot, I guess 
if people are open to talking about it, how, how many of you out there, if, if in your communities are willing to actually file a report with uh, the inspection uh, branch of SASC Health with the police or whatever the case may be to, to make this stuff go away? Because um, I think th th that's why an organized sport is flourishing is because we're, you know, all of us are sort of tolerating us, I guess. Um, I think their problem, Doug, is going to be is is these groups are going to fall right back onto that. Well, we can have 150 people in a gathering. Well, that that that's exactly that's exactly. And we're good to I go. Think. Yeah, for sure. I think that'll be a big part of this ask for sure. Hugh, is this organized piece and 150. There's a question there, I guess, from um, Danielle. Um, Nicole. Yeah, I put it in here. Um, about rural teams traveling. So, so, Danielle, if you jump in and chat about that, go ahead. So, right now, uh, BRT, uh, you know, there is no real guidelines for outdoor sport for the most part. But when questions are asked of individual sport, they kind of leave, leave it up to each community to determine what uh, close travel is. And it makes it very difficult because they say, well, travel is not recommended except for essential reasons, right? And, and yet when we talk about it with sport, the government does not want to put a number on what, what travel for sport will mean. So we kind of went through that last fall and it's really no different right now um, once what I want to know if your question is, a, do you mean in the interim or when you, when we get to, to the third week of June and step two, is that, uh, can you clarify I'm, that? Danielle? Yeah, I'm talking about step two, because from what I understood, um, last year we didn't play, but I heard that the restriction was that you had to play in your own community only, which is great for Regina or Saskatoon where they have a million other teams to play. But some yeah, of us yeah. travel 45 minutes just to play one other team because there is nobody else. And so, so last year, last fall, Danielle, that was travel was allowed within a reasonable distance where competition is, you know, where where when it allows competition. Okay. Um, but but step step two says all remaining restrictions on sport will be removed. But uh, so that's what it says in the in the in the guide, and we can travel back to that if you want Nicole when we get a chance here but so we're, we're not anticipating uh, any restrictions on sport at the end of step two uh, okay. but of course you know the proof is in the pudding right so right. I think this yeah. question we certainly don't have an answer for you now uh, right. but um, these are the things we will try to get answers for between step two but just so you know Danielle the BRT doesn't find out the information until the premier and Dr. Shahab announce it live. Right. So there's, there's sometimes work going on in the backgrounds, of course. And then once they announce the guidelines and they're very specifically vague, uh, of course, everybody's scrambling to find out what the, what the minutia of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, um, what's the word I'm searching for the interpretation of the guideline. Right. Right. So that that's been frustrating for everyone. Mm hmm. So I don't know if that answered your question, Danielle. I, I, I know it didn't answer your question, but at least yeah, give you I some just, background. I <laughs> just thought I would stick that in there because I know we had talked about it at one of our return to soccer meetings and yep. it wasn't, and that BRT was, the question was being raised with them because it had come up last year. So I just wanted to stick that out there just so that we keep it in our mind. So Nicole, just remind me if I'm correct on this. Just as long, you know, as, as recent as three weeks ago, we talked to BRT about this, and they 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 sort of leave it up to the local community to decide what reasonable travel is, and at the same time, they say essential travel only. So, yeah. do you have any thoughts on that, Nicole? Yeah, uh, last year when the guidelines first came out, it was no travel, and then they loosened that so that you could travel whether there is no competition in your area. And that's what it is under the current restrictions. So I can't see them. Well, that's not, that is that they left it up to our discretion if there's a reasonable distance to travel. Um, so I don't suspect that would change if there's no competition in your community, but that's a good one to definitely keep on our radar because 
yeah, we don't know if we will see uh, travel restrictions in step two or not. Um, but they've been they've been pretty good when there's no competition in a community allowing um, individuals or teams to travel that way. But tournaments and things like that, we, that's a that's another story. Oh no, definitely no tournaments. We just need yeah. one other town to play. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, my my vision of what they've been saying to us so far is that once we get to that stage, that that's not going to be an issue. But again, you never know what what the plan will be until you get to it. And yeah. even when you get to it, you often don't know that the details you need. So, uh, comment back, Amanda. Just I, I don't think that uh, we'll we'll probably talk about. Uh, facility relief uh, in this kind of an ask, be, be, be direct with you on that piece. And I think that uh, the facility operators that should be probably a, a campaign where you're going to have to really document the hardship that's been there. And, and I think the government's probably, from their perspective, feels they've offered all kinds of things. But that, that I think we're focused on return to play only and not particularly about facility operators with this advocacy piece. So if I were to sort so, these, oh. So Nikon, you got a, Matt has got a comment there, but I'm not sure I'm, uh, I understand the question. Oh, she said just a piece of information. So a good thing to have on our, our radar, but probably not a priority ask. Okay, um, thank you. So if I were to organize the top three out of here, These are important to keep on our radar, but I would say, and feel free if anyone thinks I'm wrong, but um, competition, meaningful competitions or scrimmages, um, athletes on the field is definitely an important one, reducing the restrictions before June 21st, the most, a lot of you are, are traditionally done around that date. Uh, mini leagues, I don't think this is something we expect yeah, I don't think so either, but we'll see. But something to keep on our radar. Uh, I think this is a good one is prioritizing organized sport over sanctioned yeah. sport. Yeah, so I would I like say it. these are probably our top four. These are really good. Uh, if anyone disagrees or thinks something's missing, feel free to drop a comment. Or if you agree, feel free to drop a comment. Uh, Jason, can you clarify the 150 outdoor gathering for May 30th? We need to be able to increase gathering limits. We cannot uh, clarify that at this time. We've asked the government about that one, and that's the one that they said is still on the table, uh, Jason. So we do suspect at some point they're going to allow us to have more on the field because it doesn't make sense that you can have 150 in outdoor gathering May 30th and only 30 for sport, uh, but we haven't received any confirmation of that yet. Did we catch that right, Jason? All right. So I think for me, Nicole, those are those are solid foundation we can build this piece around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. So Leonard nice. Luco, this comes back to your question. Who do we need to send this to? and or who can advocate on our behalf. Um, so um, certainly I've got a list of likely suspects here that we'd like to, to get to, um, but we'd be, we'd be certainly interested in hearing. And I, I would offer the question is, do people have connections to, to directly to people of influence um, where, where a direct ask can, to, can get to the premier or to Dr. Shab or whoever? That's that that can make a big difference if you have those types of contacts. Please let us know. So I'll, I'll go through my list, Nicole, and, and and then we'll just invite people. Or is that how you want to do that, or you want to just uh, get commentary? Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, people can add them in as you go. Don't worry if someone's already on there. Just just plug away your thoughts, and we'll put some on here as well. So. Um, the business response team and the ministry that manages the business response is immigration and career training. 
that's that's a, a big piece, of course. So no immigration and career training, not education. Uh, yeah. Oh, geez. It's hard to type when you know people are watching. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> And, and, you know, and, and so I'll just list them, Nicole, and then people can listen to what I'm saying, and then we can start to capture them as well. But obviously, the premier that manages executive accounts government, and, and so there's some folks of influence there. And, and if we get to the premier and we can get it on the agenda, that executive council, that's, that's where things get changed. The Ministry of Sport, Culture, and Recreation has limited influence so we be just blunt with you on that but there's certainly people that we should get to as well of course as ministry of there's two two ministers of sask health it's Mer merriman and hinley and uh so there's two specific uh ministers of health that we would two different branches that we should try to get to um Individual MLAs, I would ask on the call, how many of you guys know, personally know the MLA that covers your, your location, your region of the province? Um, getting those in their hands uh, makes a big difference. They, they make their living by trying to represent the people in their areas and they can, they can have an influence um, uh, in some, some way. So um, obviously our ultimate goal would be, you know, to get through the premier, get through the health to get to Dr. Shahab, because he has a, a huge amount of control in this, uh, but it is a political game as well. And uh, that's why we're advocating for this campaign uh, with your support at this time. Uh, we think the timing's right to, to, that the influence uh, can make a difference. Any other thoughts from anybody or does anybody have any direct contacts? And if you do and don't wanna share them online, uh, you can certainly follow up with me or Nicole tomorrow. We appreciate that. You feeling okay about that then, Nicole? Yeah. yeah if anyone thinks of anything, you can just add it after. Okay, excellent. So that sort of forms the foundation. So what we're suggesting is that, as to say, we'll build a uh, letter. Um, we will share it with all the uh, member organizations and we'll give some direction about who you can share it to. And specifically, if you can influence your individual MLAs and, uh, and share it around to various folks that will we'll craft that strategy and we'll get that out um, pretty quick. Uh, I think we'd like to actually uh, turn this around as quick as possible. Uh, um, love to get this stuff into the, to the, the people's hands by the weekend so they can think about it over the weekend. Because things change on Mondays and Tuesdays, and they make make announcements on Tuesdays, so you kind of got to get ahead of it, right? So, whether they say something next week or the week after, but uh, we'd like obviously your your cooperation to turn these things around quickly. So, Nicole, let's maybe just open up the lines a little bit and just ask the members that, you know, can we count on your support to to uh, to write the letters and to, you know to execute whatever uh, support that you can give to this. Thoughts from anybody? Concerns from anybody? There's a second part to this question too. We didn't really touch on if how can we advocate. So if you have another suggestion that's not uh, a letter writing campaign or or anything else, you can feel free to put a sticky note in there as well. Thank you, Nicole. Sorry, I missed that piece. No worries. Man, I got that note and I have your letter. I appreciate that. And, and we've already used some of that with our Ask to BRC, BRT last week. And you have some links to studies, for example, on mental health. So those are appreciated. And we will certainly do that. So thank you. All right, how are we feeling about this, folks? Uh, I got another question here. Okay. 
uh, will you be sending out info to clubs about where to send these letters? Should we be passing the letter on to the community members and parents? Certainly can do that. Um, if you have letterhead and it's coming from your sport organization, and for example, if you want to customize it and say, in addition to the other soccer community in Saskatchewan, we have this many people in your MLA region, feel free to do that as well. So those are some of the things about how to advocate in the poll that can be helpful to us. And certainly the more letters that go in, the better. And, and having parents and athletes participate, that's fantastic. And I appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing that. With all of them though, again, be respectful and be, and be focusing on that we're safe, we're organized and we're ready to return to play and, and offer a quality product. I think that's the tone we want to bring to this, okay? And we'll include uh, these key messages, Doug Hay, okay, in the Friday communication and... Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll actually, I think we're going to try to do, Nicole is actually build the letter by then, right? Yeah. We'll build a template for people and we'll, we'll give it to you. And again, feel free if you, if you have things that you think are valuable but that you want to customize to your specific needs, feel free to add that. But we're going to build a template and we'll also build a list of, you know, of these various uh, contacts within government. So we'll, we'll, we'll share that spreadsheet uh, with, with all the various contacts and email contacts and who those folks are. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else we missed there, Nicole? Uh, no, I think I think we're okay. This is awesome. this is some good information. Um, this jam board will be be live for a bit. Um, so if you think of something in the middle of the night and you just have to add it, you can copy and paste the link into your browser or bookmark it right now, and you can always add something later on. Perfect. So with that, uh, we'll jump into any questions regarding uh, return to soccer. And then uh, we're going to go into some member updates. So I'm just going to stop sharing here for a minute. Uh, we invite you all to put on your cameras uh, if you're not too shy. Uh, we'd love to see your faces. Is there any uh, first time folks on the call? Uh, I think I've seen. Good to see everybody. <clears throat> awesome. So nice to see everybody's faces. Well, not too many COVID haircuts out there. Not bad. I always have to <laughs> remind myself if I'm going into a meeting. <laughs> What, am I actually dressed today? Do I have my hair in a tizzy here or what? So, oh, TJ says sorry, he's driving. That's oh, okay, no TJ. All good. It's all good, guys. Sorry, guys. No worries. Okay. Comments or questions from anybody um, as we get in, getting prepared to go to updates? It's good to see everybody. We think that. The work we've done this past year at various times, we've had an influence. Other times we've had no influence at all. Uh, we hope that this is a time that, you know, collectively we can can make a difference. Um, we, th we think that through our efforts and the efforts of other sport that they added adults into the training component here for the spring. And that was something to be gained. And uh, hopefully we can convince them that 150 unorganized people probably aren't quite as safe as, as the programs that you folks deliver. So that's gonna be a, a heart of our message for sure. Well, I've got a question in the chat from Amanda asked what day this will be available to members. So I think you mean the templates, right, Amanda? Yeah, that would go out in our, our Friday communication. Yeah, we're gonna to try to crank it out as soon as we can, Amanda. 
uh, turn it around and, and, and uh, possibly even before the Friday communication, if, if we can. Um, we've got a lot of things that we're dealing with right now, but that's certainly a high priority and we wanted to talk to you folks tonight. So we'll try to turn that around as quick as we can. Perfect. Well, maybe let's go around and uh, get updates for everyone, how things are going, uh, how the roadmap has affected, the government's roadmap has affected your planning. Uh, if you're still planning on doing the groups of eight or you're holding out for competition, uh, anything that you want to share with us. Uh, let's start with Hugh, QC. Oh, we can't hear you, Hugh. We're back on field uh, last week with groups of eight in the X in our premier level kids. All of our grassroots and competitive kids start on Monday. Um, with the restrictions, it's uh, about three times the field usage, mm -hmm. uh, if not more, uh, yeah. which, you know, we'll see a significant increase in, let's say, field and painting, because we painted all the fields as well into six six areas so that keeps every group out so we're not using all six right now because of course we can't have more than 30 but they're there once we hopefully can go back up to 48 50 kids then they all each have a a third a six of the field divided with painted lines so they know where they're at uh, monday will be a big test because we have 31 30 u5s coming out so uh, that that'll be interesting to see what happens with that with social distancing That'll be that'll be the fun one, but and then Tuesday we have I guess seventy two U sevens coming out, so we'll see how that goes over two hours. Oh wow! On two on two on two major pitches, so yeah, that's where we're at. Thank you. So do you use the parents on the field with the U fives, or is it just the U fives? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try not to because of the fact that the parents count as a number. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work. We're gonna see how it goes. We got five players to every coach that we got on the field so hopefully we'll you know with us painting the field they we can at least keep them out and we'll we'll go from there it'll be fun we did we did some work with some u7s this uh this last while uh with social distancing and and we were able to get it to work with seven the u7s so we're hopeful to to get the u5s to to follow suit good anyone has any questions for Hugh or anyone else to uh, feel free uh, to speak up or, or put them in the chat. Um, let's go to Danielle with QVSA, Valley Soccer. Well, I'm with Kelleher and we have a total of, I think, 38 players registered for our town. <laughs> so we are staggering practice. We all have one practice night because our to make our club they drive at least half an hour to 40 minutes to get there so we always have one practice night but we are staggering the practice um so that the younger ones are earlier and the older ones are later because some of our older ones are coaching and helping yeah. so we have lots of apprehensive parents because we haven't done anything since 2019 zero nothing um I'm apprehensive as well because I'm still feeling confused about a lot of things. And as I'm reading through my return to soccer plan tonight, I'm going, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. And I forgot to do that. And I forgot to do that. So tonight and tomorrow I'm scrambling a bit, trying to get everything ready for my coaches and for what we've discussed and make sure everything is ready. And I just feel a little overwhelmed because I still... Yeah, I think I need to talk to other people that have been doing this for a year under the restrictions so that I feel yeah. better about it because I have lots of new families to soccer. So they're all feeling very apprehensive and confused as well. So we're trying to make this a very positive start, but as it gets closer to Thursday, I'm getting more and more nervous. So yeah, <laughs> under five, all the way up to under 19, and we've had to combine some groups and yeah, it's a little bit, um, a little bit nerve wracking actually right now. Having asking parents to stay in their cars when they have under fives, yeah. and I'm trying to figure out the screening thing. Like, how do you do screening with under five and under seven? Like, 
do you ask them all those questions? Because they're just going to look at you with a blank face. And we've asked the parents to try to stay in their vehicles. So it's, yeah, there's lots of things we need to figure out, like what's allowed. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of members on this call that have been back to soccer for over a year now. So I'm sure some of them would have some, some good advice for you. I, I'd love advice. I'd love my coaches would love advice. I mean, we know passing drills are allowed, but the kids have to be spread apart. But it's other things like um, I really appreciated SAS soccer sending us that those things from Manitoba that gave us a place to start. You know, mm -hmm. I know they're they have 10 on the field for those. But um, yeah, I really would love some some just some ideas for for drills and what's allowed and what's not allowed and you know what I mean like what are you doing with those under fives to keep them from away from their parents all of that so yeah Hugh what are you doing with all those 70 under fives or how many you have well the u5s like I said they'll, that they'll be interesting because it'll be the first time we're we're at them um but uh, with the U7s, actually, we didn't have a problem, right? With uh, It's just all about cones and, and, and being very clear on your language as the players come in and, uh, you know, having a place for their bag, having a place, you know, so they got a cone that that's where their bag goes. And then, you know, here's your cone to go stand at before we get ready. And here's the cone on the field where you go. And it's, it's just about being very clear and having enough staff to, to get them in but once they're in you'll you'll be surprised how good the u7s do the u5s i i don't know yet that that could be a disaster in the waiting but we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl and mm -hmm. it's a, you know with enough staff we can we can push the issue um as far as screening i was just typing in my thing we we aren't you know after last fall stuff we're not screening anymore because we're, we're at that point now where we know who's at practices and we can provide that information, but if you're at a point where you still want to screen so that your parents feel more comfortable or you feel more comfortable, then um, I'll see if I still have it. But we created a, a Google Docs form. So it's basically a questionnaire and you're able to send the parents the link and, you, and you just tell them to keep it on their phone and they can actually fill it out on their phone then and answer all the questions you have. And then it updates your spreadsheet live. Oh, that's and then, cool. And then basically what we did was um, when they came to the field, we just, we had a laptop and we had it on, you know, we had a, we had on um, an iPhone and, and an iPad. So it was just very easy to use Wi-Fi. And then if they, with the Google form, there's, you can set it up so that if they answer one of the questions as yes, then it'll highlight their whole thing red. And then that way, you know, that there, they could be somebody who's answered a question you need to ask them about but that's how we how we did it and it eliminates paper wow and it was and it was live right away so awesome. we had people pulling up in their car filling it in hmm. so it's one that way. sounds amazing how are you so techie <laughs> you know it's it's it, it was easy to do the google forms is super easy google form questionnaire so it's it's pretty simple to do and uh yeah we just did it and it it was perfect. Yeah, and it's good to do the screening before they get to the field because if they get to the field and they can't answer those questions, it's kind of too late. They're already there. Mm -hmm. So if they can do it at home, I know some organizations use the, the government self-assessment tool too, the, the tool that tells you if you should be going to get tested or not. They require that the parents do that and then screenshot it and send a picture and you can have spectators at the field also. Um, I don't know your yeah. setup, but there's 30 spectators allowed per field. Well, we're trying not to, but I, yeah. I've kind of said, like, I understand what under five is like. I mean, my daughter cried at every single practice in every game. That's why I was the coach. So I do get it. But I also think kids do better when the parents aren't around. So this might mm -hmm. be a really great opportunity, you know, <laughs> just to break that habit of the parents always hovering because I find they are so much more focused when the parents are nowhere to be seen so 
it's it's kind of a, a good thing that this is happening and we're just going to sort of play it by ear but yeah. most of our under five are brand new to soccer like all the kids and all the parents so it's going to be interesting yeah mm -hmm. does anyone else have any advice for for danielle returning to soccer for the first time that's so quiet well if you think of anything you can send her a message in the chat oh leonard says lakewood uses team linked for covid waivers yeah i'm writing so that down out. right now i'm seeing that And then you can use it to know his availability session. Uh, the ramp app has a, a feature as well, a tracking or a screening feature if you wanted to go that route. Wow. Hey, okay, I'll try to figure that out. <laughs> okay, let's go over to Leonard at Lakewood. How are things going at Lakewood? Uh, pretty well. We've been training for, uh, started May 3rd, I guess it was, uh, groups of eight. Um, it's pretty good with the older players. The younger ones, under we don't do under fives, but under sevens are a little bit of a challenge from times. Uh, but yeah, things are going pretty well. Good. Not much change from indoor. Yeah. Uh, we're outside now. That's the only Yeah. Day. Yeah. And smaller... Uh, less players on the field than we were indoor, which is kind of ridiculous, but. Yes, yes, yeah. that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Jason, JJ out of Musha. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, now, I'm now you can this time. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, we're starting on Sunday. Uh, regular programs will start next week, Monday through Thursday. We have U5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and up to 19. So um, our challenge, with, our greatest strength has always been we've had one field to work off of. And that's now our greatest weakness because we only have one field to work off of. Yeah. So I was waiting for tonight's meeting and uh, tomorrow we'll probably either have to adjust and get a second field or we'll have to switch the times because we have groups of 60 u5s and u7s so i'll have to go probably five to six six to seven and then 715 to 845 for our older groups or find another field so we'll see but uh no we'll just we'll roll with the punches my big thing will be i'm watching for the 150 number i seen that and my eyes lit up and i'm like there's no way you, you can't allow sport to go and you're gonna have 150 people on a field so my my biggest push would be that we get that for may 30th as of yeah. May 30th, we should be allowed to have 150 people training or on a field, right, at a location. Um, and if that happens, I think we, I, I would be quite happy. So we'll, I'm sure it would make everybody else happy. And then if they allowed us to play some inner squad games as well. Yeah. yeah I think that would be huge for everybody, Jason. Thank you. Well said. Yep. Yeah. Amanda with SYSI. Well, we have um, all of our community associations and zones have been running their training groups of eight since beginning of May. Some started in the last week of April as well. We have about 14 community associations that are taking part this outdoor season out of, uh, sometimes we have upwards of about 32 community associations. So quite a few community associations have decided to opt out of soccer this outdoor season just due to volunteers and their boards not being comfortable operating or providing any programming during the pandemic um, but our numbers are positive i think we have close to about three thousand registrations for this outdoor season so oh, wow. that's, i think it's about 68 percent of what we wouldn't have in a normal outdoor season so i think that's positive for the times that we're in right now um, but we have extended our youth season till July 18th and we're holding out for games and hopeful to get back to some type of meaningful competition soon here. When is your season normally done? Normally we're done at the end of June. Yeah. Yeah. 
in a couple more weeks. I should stop using acronyms because not everyone will know what I'm talking about, but you probably, people are probably guessed by the 3,000 kids that here in Saskatoon use soccer. Um, thanks, Amanda. Yeah. Uh, Hugh with Saskatoon United Soccer Club. <laughs> Well, good evening, Nicole. Yeah, we've gone seamless. Um, it's been transfusion has been fine. I'm very blessed that I have a tremendous uh, safety crew. Um, we totally uh, follow science. Uh, we're not scientists ourselves and we're not doctors. So we follow what is being told to us by people who are qualified to tell us. And if the dates are pulled back or rolled back, then, then so be it. But we are not going to be putting our children in the line of fire. And we certainly don't want to have a fatality within our organization. So we have put our weight in the science and in the medical direction. We've got, I have, um, yeah, I have again, the automatic screening for our players. So we don't have to worry. They do check in prior to coming to the field. We also have, um, Starting like who in Regina, we start in a U5 academy as well. We start in it. We've decided that it's time to get into the um, the communities, and so the, this pandemic has been actually good for us because it's been allowing us now to focus on areas that I otherwise wouldn't have focused on. So I've been using our time with with our experts, and um, I've screened my coaches for U5 and U7s. So they are the ones that's actually going to be running with the skill sets uh, required for the U5s and U7s. I've heard too many parents saying they put their kids in this program and that program and the coach only stands around. Well, I've made sure that the coaches who are going to be running this new program that we started up is going to be um, there. And the cost is big for us, so we've reduced all our costs too. It's going to be about five bucks an hour for the kids because... Um, we're not in it to make huge money. We're there to get more kids participating in the sport. So we're doing that. And then we're looking at within uh, SUSC and offering uh, things now because we've linked with an overseas club um, where we're going to focus on the ones that normally wouldn't be looked at for traveling, the ones that normally wouldn't be looked at for the high level uh, teams. And there's a big market out there I found for um, for these players who would like to travel and have the opportunity. may not be a premier player, but a Div 2 player. So, yes, it's been really good with us. We've we got, we got lots of things underway. Um, again, I must say thank you to, to you, Nicole, and to Doug and the staff who's helped us out um, in the pandemic, getting our licensing. And um, it's as we said to the CSA with Jason the other day, you can keep wanting all these licenses in the world, but if you don't learn to act on the one by one by one and do the first ones right and the second ones right, um, it sometimes can collapse around you. So we, we focus in on development slowly but surely and bringing uh, more kids back into the game. I'm in a tough zone, tough club, but you know what? Life is tough. We've just got to push through it. So thanks to you, Doug, and thanks to you, staff. It's been Thank awesome. You. That's great. Thanks, you. Danielle with Saskatoon Adult Soccer. Hi, guys. Uh, we had originally planned to start uh, this Friday, but of course that's been pushed. So we condensed our schedule. And so we'll run our first session from June 1st to June 30th, assuming and hoping we can return to play. If not, we will cancel our first session, uh, but the board has proceeded with caution. And so we did split our outdoor season into those two sessions. So our second session is scheduled to start July 9th. So hopefully by then we'll be able to come back and we'll have that session. But right now we're, we're waiting on format. They might continue to proceed with caution and have the half field mini league structure that we've had the past year, uh, but I'll find out next week. Do you have any adults training in groups of eight? Uh, not that we are doing. I know some of our players are training, uh, but nothing through the league itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Chris with Astra. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Can you? Okay. Perfect. Sorry, everyone's been kind of lagging, so I don't know if it's my internet. Your face uh, is frozen, but we can hear you. Uh, um, we've everybody else to hopefully it's frozen in a decent position. Sorry, everyone. Um, we started last Monday. Um, we've got Happy Feet starting up in a couple of weeks, so Happy Feet is to five. Um, and obviously the restrictions haven't helped us too much in that area because we do have to have so sizes for the control quite a bit smaller than the, the four and five year olds, the four and five year olds, we tried to run without any parent support. The two and three year olds were likely having this two smaller groups of four with the and then between the groups. So one coach kind of facilitated groups with the five meters of distance in between. Um, uh, really hasn't changed from November 27th. So everything that we did at, at this point, it's just like Hugh and Jason trying to uh, accommodate all the play lots that uh, we've had to go out and book three times hire more coaches to work with the number of kids. Unfortunately, we've had to turn some people away at this point, just because we don't have, I guess, as many resources to work with all the players during those designated time slots. So um, it's unfortunate that we're having to turn people away at this point, but uh, hopefully the restrictions do improve in the next month and we can work with a few more players. Thanks, Chris. You're really choppy there, but I think we caught caught most of what you said. Um, yeah, I know. Sorry. Are, no, yeah, no, no worries. Know if you could hear me. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I think we got most of it. Um, so that's good. Yeah, I know a few organizations are having trouble with coaches, and uh, you know, like Danielle said, bringing in the the older players to coach the young ones. I've heard a. Uh, a few organizations doing that, which is really great. That's really good opportunity to get those players involved as coaches. So that's nice to hear. Um, Jerry with Melford. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, we started uh, actually last night was our first night for this outdoor season and we haven't played uh, for over a year uh, we had our last indoor season was the year before last so we've been off for a while and it was good to get back and it's been a quite a road trying to get everything organized and yeah the restrictions have definitely made it challenging with trying to figure out fields and uh, get everybody separated adequately and mm -hmm. um, our group is smaller this year that I think just because the optimism isn't there that games are going to happen. So yeah, especially yeah. any of the competitive groups, they, you know, those, those numbers are down considerably. And so I think we're at about 90, 90 players for outdoor and that's U5 to U through U19. So usually we'd be in the 170 range, I would guess for outdoor. So it's decent. Um, it is, that does help actually having the numbers down a bit. Uh, with the group sizes and the fields so but we're back at it and uh, our season will go to uh, June 23rd so I mean hopefully things will change and we'll be able to get to play some games but you know, do what what we're allowed to do yeah yeah I'm sure those 90 kids were happy to be back out there hey yeah they were definitely it was uh, there was a lot of interest because I put out a Basically, I put out a poll about a month ago just to even see if it was worth trying, just to see what the appetite was for put, putting this together. And uh, I was overwhelmed. I had about 160 people that were interested at that time. So it was like, okay, well, I guess we're, we're doing this. So, so no, it's unfortunate that the variants creeped in and yeah. sort of slowed everything down. But, you know, it is what it is. So we're yeah. working through it. Thanks, Jerry. 
Mm -hmm. Hassan with Valley Soccer Association. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, <laughs> camera is off, just having trouble with internet as well. No problem. Uh, yeah, we've been practicing uh, since last week, uh, still group of eight. Uh, I agree with everyone else. Like the biggest challenge is the, especially with the minis, uh, we usually have like a lot of coaches help or parents. And now with the restriction of like uh, 10, uh, restricted to 10 for each group, uh, you can have parents help or like uh, more than two coaches if the group is eight players. So that's been challenging. Uh, I was fortunate that I, uh, <clears throat> I did coach during indoor, like throughout the restriction. So kind of like uh, uh, have experience now, like running session with the restriction and just bringing them, bringing them to almost like a game-like situation, uh, still without any contact or uh, 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 respecting like uh, all like health restrictions. So yeah, we're adjusting and uh, just staying positive and ho hopefully we can get back to the game soon. That's great. Have you guys extended your season at all or you going as usual? Uh, no, it's same as the usual. We just started last week and it's going to run until uh, uh, the first week of July, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Hassan. Thank uh, you. Michelle with Langenberg. Sorry, you caught me off guard. I was listening to everyone else and I was like, oh, everyone's doing so good. Okay, oh, no so um, we're one of those rural clubs that pulls from a bunch of different areas. We have about 123 players registered, um, which is a little less than we normally do. I think we're normally around 160, but we found that the older age groups like U9 and older, it was harder to get um, the numbers we normally get, I think, because initially um, people wanted to play games and all of that stuff. Uh, we had our first practice for all the U7s and older last Thursday, and we had our first um, session for everyone today, um, and it was chaos. But I think it went pretty well. Um, yeah, and we've been using the ramp app. Uh, I know that um, someone was talking about pre-screeners. The ramp app is like fabulous and like super easy to set up. So if uh, Swift Current taught me how to do that. So uh, if you need any help with that, I'm happy to pass that on as well. Um, but otherwise, yeah good excited to be back on the field we didn't we didn't do anything since last winter so um we're we're just pumped to be out there and hopefully we're we're up for writing whatever you guys need us to write to hopefully speed up the return to play plan for sports because being able to do like small sided games would be very great <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Michelle. 123 kids out of 160 is really good when there's, there's no games involved. That's impressive. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, TJ with FC Regina. You're our last one, I think. Must have missed someone. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we pushed our season a little bit back, actually, about a week and a half than what we usually do. So we usually start um, like first week of May or second week of May sometimes, uh, but we have pushed it to third week of May this year, uh, just making sure that the, the coaches got all the all the, the rest from the indoor season and and all. And then we are being we do deal with a lot of volunteer coaches too. So wanted to make sure that we are all um, 
settled in. Like they're all settled in. We have all the plan and everything in place uh, for their safety and for the for the athlete safety as well, of course. Um, and uh, so talking to the technical team, we pushed that back um, and pushed the season back at the, at the end as well to end of July versus like middle of July, which we usually uh, end. Um, so this would also hopefully with the with the, the the step two coming up in the middle of our third week of June, uh, or hopefully soon um, before that, um, uh, the, the athletes will also get to to play some games and stuff. So um, as far as uh, our registrations go, uh, we have about about twenty five percent drop in the registrations. But again, we our registration is still open. So uh, so we're hoping we probably will end up about about twenty percent below what we usually get. Um, as far as adults go, uh, we just opened our registration a couple of weeks ago here. Uh, and uh, we are seeing some good response, especially after that announcement from, uh, from Mo there. Um, so um, yeah, so hoping to get decent amount of uh, registrants there. We had, uh, had pretty successful modified uh, outdoor season last year for adults. Um, so we're hoping to see something similar or maybe better. So, yeah. That's great. Thanks, CJ. Are you doing awesome. uh, one season for adults or two like Saskatoon adult was going to? We are just doing one for now uh, because we are probably going to open up our indoor season earlier uh, because uh, we are trying to get into arrangement with Evra's to, to use the indoor facility earlier than what we usually get um, uh, access to that. Um, so, yeah, so we're hoping to do like a two indoor seasons uh, instead. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. Perfect. Uh, see, Danielle put her email in the, the chat here. If anyone has any drills or ideas, uh, you can send them along to her. That would be Thank you, Leonard. Be great. He already sent me something. So oh, wow. It's, it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Same if anyone wants, we have a resources page um, on our website and we could put some of those drills on there as well. If anyone wants to share those with all members, you can you can send them my way and I can post them on our website. We'd appreciate that. Um, Nicole, just before we jump off this, mm -hmm. I just wanna say how grateful we are to everybody that's on the call and sharing your experience. It's really important for us to know what's going on with you folks and, and so, um, we just want to say thanks very much for everybody for, for talking and sharing tonight. Uh, we got a couple more pieces to jump through, but we'll get through them pretty quick. But before we left here, I just want to say thanks. So, Thanks, Doug. And I'm going to pop my screen back up. Don't worry, we don't have too many more slides. We don't <clears throat> usually keep you guys so late. Um, so we just have a few more things to go through and then um, some exciting news, and then we will let you go for the evening. I shared the right screen there, right? You have my PowerPoint? Yeah, we're on that questions and update slide, so. Uh, so just a reminder, uh, there has been a survey sent out uh, for those interested in the 2021 Toyota National Championships. Um, Canada Soccer is looking for confirmations of interest. Um, you're not committed if you say yes, and then COVID doesn't allow it or obvious reasons. Um, so the details um, were in last Friday's communication. If your organization normally attends nationals, uh, we ask that you fill that out, um, whether you're interested or not. A reminder about the raffle box uh, fundraiser. So it's an online 50-50 that we're running on our end. There's no risk to members. Um, all you have to do is, is encourage sales. And we post, we do the draws, uh, we issue the checks, uh, we hold the lottery license. Um, so you really only work with it would be promoting it to your membership and they would choose their organization and funds would go directly back to, to you. So 50% goes to the winner, 35% goes to the sellers, 15% uh, goes to Rafflebox for expenses and marketing. Um, so the license is pending right now. Um, our lottery license 
um, but we're hoping to have that approved shortly. So we're encouraging uh, members to express interest in that. So um, you can be one of the first members in on the draw. Um, so far we have Cudworth, FC Regina, Kindersley, uh, Prince Albert Youth, Queen City United, Pal Valley, Saskatoon Adult, Saskatoon Youth, Swift Current, Weyburn, Yorkton, and Humboldt. So um, if you're interested, you can email uh, Stephen Porter on our staff. If you don't have his email, you email me and I'll pass it along to him. Now our exciting news. I'm going to play a video for everyone. Very short. Very short video. Just a, a sneak peek of something to, that's to come next week. Thanks, Nicole. So we're very excited about this partnership we've just entered into with Living Sky Sports and Entertainment. We hope that's gonna to lead to a long-term mutually beneficial partnership for the soccer members in Saskatchewan, the participants, the member organizations, just the whole soccer community. And this is a first step. As we talked before in many of our communications uh, with Living Sky, if we build that stadium, uh, then we have the opportunity for soccer to really come to next level in the province. Through, uh, so, so through your support, uh, a new stadium will be realized and the partnership will pay dividends for many years to come. So just want to uh, uh, thank Nicole for building the, 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 the teaser strategy that we, uh, or teaser uh, information we laid out there tonight. Well done, Nicole, and watch for details coming out very soon, uh, probably early next week. Thanks, Doug. So yeah, keep an eye on your emails and social media. Uh, early next week, we're very excited to share that news with you all. And obviously we appreciate if you can amplify that through all of your avenues and gain some support, uh, which well, you'll find more about as we roll this out shortly. Uh, so with that next meeting uh, will either be as soon as required if we get some updates from the government or uh, Tuesday, June 15th, if we don't receive um, news before then. Upcoming events and deadlines. Uh, again, reminder, May 13th is the deadline to respond to that national survey. Uh, May 15th is uh, Vancouver Whitecaps and SSA Coach uh, Development Series webinar. May 17th is an intro to video analysis webinar for coaches. Uh, June 1st is the deadline for applications for the Active Start uh, Fest, so that's those Canada soccer uh, festivals um, that we talked about on the last uh, member call, and there's information in our communications as well. Um, so anyone can apply for those. Mm -hmm. June 7th is the registrar submission deadline. And then um, June 21st, reminder again, you don't submit your payment this year with your registrar report. You wait until June 21st. Um, to get your payment in because we're gonna let you know what your outdoor stimulus funding credit amount is after the seventh if you're eligible. And then again, final uh, outdoor registration deadline is September 30th.
So with that, we'll open it up to any any last questions or comments or feedback. For me, Nicole, this was a great session tonight. Um, really appreciate everybody's energy and, and participation tonight and give us something to build on. We'll get back to you shortly with this advocacy piece and obviously Friday communication and then exciting announcements early next week, hopefully. Lisa, any last thoughts from you? I just, again, want to thank everybody for uh, participating tonight. It was, uh, I love that uh, sticky note thing that uh, was a great way to help build that letter. So kudos, Nicole. And thanks for everybody for, uh, you know, providing that feedback and helping us get the message out. So it was a, it was a great meeting. Thanks, Lisa. Nicole, last word to you. I don't see any, uh, no questions in the chat and no hands up. Uh, so with that, we'll, we'll wrap it up. It was good to see some of faces tonight. Um, we don't get to see you guys very often anymore. So we appreciate you turning your cameras on and engaging and um, for sticking with us uh, an extra bit tonight. So with that, we will wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, guys.